Hello everybody. Thanks for joining us. This is about FileAgo. FileAgo as you might know by now. It's secure file management, file sharing, and collaboration software. You can host this inside your premise or you can host on the cloud as well. For an organization who wants total control over the data, they can host a server and run FileAgo inside their organization itself, or else if you want to move your data into cloud, this can be hosted on any kind of cloud platform or if you have a data center or a server in some kind of data center. You can do that. Hosting options are also available with us as well. I am currently going to log into the server which is hosted onto the cloud and this is the web portal. Basically this is a browser window. I'm logging in as a user here and we have a two-factor authentication functionality, but currently, I have not enabled it for this account. I'm just skipping this field and I am directly logging in. As soon as I log in as a user, you can see that I am now in my workspace. It consists of several top-level folders, which you can see that currently I'm in the home folder and these are the data that is inside my home folder. This is my personal workspace. In fact, you can see your stuff is written here. Basically all these data that you're seeing here, it belongs to me and nobody else has access to these files and folders. Until and unless I am in some way granting access to other people. If I am a member of groups, then I will also be having access to group workspace as well. If I click on groups, I can see that I am a member of three groups here, by clicking on marketing. I have just switched to the marketing group workspace. You can see that right now. I'm not in my personal space. I am in my marketing group workspace where I can see all the files and folders belonging to the marketing group. Similarly, this is the data that belongs to the sales group. You may have assumed by now other members of the sales group will also be having access to this workspace. Similarly, the case with the data in the marketing workspace. There are other members of the marketing group who will be having access. In this way by the use of workspace FileAgo actually separates your personal content, which you put in your personal workspace with the content that you share and collaborate with other people in a group. You can separate your content with the content that you are collaborating with others. For a major part of this demo, we will be focusing on the personal workspace. As you can see there are a lot of folders and there are a lot of files. You can see that there are a lot of extensions. There is an ICO file, docx file, jpg file, PDF file, text file, XLSX file, and EXE file even. You can put in any kind of file format in FileAgo, there is no restriction. It will gladly accept anything that you throw at it. Most of these file formats you will be able to preview with straight from the browser itself. With FileAgo, you do not have to download the file and open it in a suitable application. You can see the preview straight from the browser itself. What I mean is that I just click on this path, I can see what the content is. I will just come down and let me just take this file. As you can see this is a docx file. I am able to see what the content is now. Let me see if I can preview the PDF file. This is a PDF file. And I can see its content as well. This is a 23 page document. If I want, I can go and view the other pages as well. I can zoom in, zoom out, and even select text from the content of the document. This was regarding the previewing mechanism. At this point in time, I would like to talk a bit about certain security features that we have. Now, of course, you see that you are uploading files, but then how secure is it? Any data that you put into FileAgo, it is always encrypted and then stored into the disk. If your server administrator tries to access the server and tries to find out this directory structure in the back end in the disk, he will not be able to find it. He will never be able to see a file name hello.docx or this folder structure anywhere in the file system. Any data that you put in it is always encrypted and then stored into the disk in an entirely different format altogether. You will not be seeing all this data in the back end. When I click on any file, let's click on leave letter.docx. What is happening is that FileAgo is actually decrypting the data from disk and then giving the output here. The same happens when I initiate the download. It takes the encrypted data from disk, decrypts it on the fly in real time, and then sends the data to my browser. Secondly, any activity that you do in a file, there will always be an event log associated with it. For example, you modified a file, you created a file, you created a folder, you deleted a file, deleted folder, you shared a file, or you share the folder with somebody else, you added a comment something, any activity that you do, which triggers a change. It will always be logged. And the good thing is that we never rotate this log. If two years later you come and see what all activities have happened on this file, that log will still be preserved in FileAgo for you to review. How to see the log? It is very simple actually. 
Just browse to the resource, scroll down and click on History tab. When I click on History, I can see all activities that are happened in this file. You can see the date and time, what event has happened, who has done it, and from which IP address the person was when he did this event, and some related event arguments as well. As you can see most of these events are done by myself only. Here somebody has downloaded this file. I know that, on so and so date and time, this user has downloaded the file from this particular IP address. Everything that happens on your resources. It is always there for you to inspect any time later when you want. Now I'm going to fetch the entire log related to this file. As you can see, I have made a lot of activity on this file. What I want to show you here is that I have fetched everything that is related to this file. You can see 23rd of March 2019. 6.32 PM was when I first created this file, I was on this particular IP address at that point in time, but most importantly you can see the file was encrypted successfully. This is being done by the Filego software itself, and it happens instantly. As you can see, the date and time remains the same. Regarding the encryption, any data that you put in it's always encrypted and then stored into disk almost at the same time. This process is repeated every time you create a new revision also. I had created a new revision and even that got encrypted at the same time. Talking about revision that is another feature that we have. Suppose if you make a change in an existing file. If I modify this file and the same file changes, the file ago is not going to overwrite the existing file. It will merely create a new version or a revision of the file and it will preserve your previous version as well. If you come here you can see that there are three revisions of this file. If I want I can go back to any of these previous revisions if I want. I simply have to click it here and you can see that I am able to see the previous version of the file. Now if I want to download this file, I can download the file as well. This is regarding the revision functionality. If you're working on file continuously, there might be cases like you will create 5, 10, 100 revisions. Suppose if this file is like 1 megabyte in size, and if there are 100 revisions, am I actually using 100 MB in the back end because that will be too much storage which I would not be wanting? Here we have a deduplication functionality as well. This is the other feature that I am talking about, along with encryption we also have a deduplication. Any data that comes in, it gets encrypted but before that the deduplication algorithm, which we kicks in and breaks the file into separate chunks then it only stores the chunks which are missing in the data store. For example, if there is an existing file, and I made a small change in the file, let's take this particular version. If I am going to edit this file and here I made a small change, like I just replaced this text with my name and saved it, it is going to create a new revision. But will it be saving the entire file? No. It will only be saving the chunks which affect this particular change. In short, what happens is that we give you the ability to roll back into previous revisions at the expense of minimal data storage extra for you. Now let me show you how to share data with others. Fileago not only stores your files, but it also allows you to collaborate on them with other people. You can collaborate with people inside your organization, as well as people outside it. We consider people inside the organization as private users and people outside the organization as public users. The share that you create will be private share when you want to share it with an inside user, and when you want to share something with the outside users you will be creating a public share. If I want to share this file with another person who is part of the organization, I will be creating a private share, that is very simple. You simply come down and enter the collaboration tab, you can see private shares public shares and block. If I want to share something with another user I will be creating a private share, simply click on plus here and I get the list of users with whom I want to share. These are all users inside the organization, I can select any of these users, multiple users if I want or I can select all groups if I want to share with the entire group of people. But most importantly what permission they will have depends upon what I am assigning them here. If I give read only, it means that this user will only have read only permission on this file. Read and write means the user can see the file he can even create new revisions on top of it. And of course, with the delete option, he will be having the permission to delete the file as well. If you notice we have kept downloading files as a separate option. I can have a very secure way. Like I can give read-only permission which means the user can only preview this file. He cannot download the file until and unless I am giving this downloading of files option. This is the permission model that we have, read, write, and delete. The download is kept as separate permission. If I give download permission, then the user will be able to download file. In this case, the user can read, write and delete but still, he will not be able to download the file until unless I give this permission. In this way, 
I have already created a private share here. You can see that I have shared it with a user called Rija. The permission I have given her is read, write, delete and download. She has all permissions that are possible to be given in this file. Now she can do read, write, delete as well as download. I have also shared with another user called Viren. He has read, write and download. He cannot delete the file but the rest of the things he can do. And I have also shared it with an entire group of people here. Now, I have shared it with the sales group and everybody in the sales group has the read and download permission. This is the beauty of file ago. You can share the same resource with multiple people with different sets of permissions. If you notice every permission that has been given to these users are entirely different. Let's talk about a real life scenario. In an organization you might be having a folder or a file where you want to give restricted access to a group of people. Let's say for 10 people. You want to give access on a folder with having read only permission on that folder. But then there might be one or two person in that group itself who should be able to write into that. Now that's a very common requirement any organization will have. When it comes to file ago, this is how you implement it. Imagine, if Richa and Veer and these two users are also members of the sales group, it means that every member of the sales group will have read and download. You might be wondering that everybody in the sales group currently has at least read and download. What if there is one person in this sales group to whom I do not even want to show this particular file? This is also a very common scenario, which might arise in an organization. If you want to implement that that is very simple, you simply can specifically block the user here. Just click on the block and you can select which user to block. In this way, I have already blocked a user named Grafen. It means that even if this user is a member of the sales group, the user Grafen will not be able to see this file because he has been specifically blocked here. This is how our permission model works and this is highly flexible as you can already see and this gets interesting when you're going to apply this on folders because currently, I have applied this on a particular file. Let's see how we can apply this to a folder. I'll just go to a folder. Let's take study materials. This is the folder and inside this folder. There is an additional subfolder and three files. I have already created a private share here for this folder. I have shared the folder with a user called Viren, and he has read and download permission, which means he cannot write he cannot delete but he can see and can download these files as well. What if you want to implement something like you want to give everybody read-only access, starting from the top level and then there might be individual folders where you want to give access to particular users. Everybody by default will only have read-only permission, they cannot write but then there will be individual folders somewhere inside the folder structure where you have specifically allowed them the write access. This is how you can implement this. I give read-only permission on a folder but then go inside and select any other subfolder, and there I create the private share again for the same user but then I gave him the additional write permission. It means, the user Viren will have write permission on this folder, but just above it, he will only be having read-only permission. This is the flexibility in file ago, you can overwrite the permission again and again as you go down the folder structure. When I say again, and again, this is limitless, for example, if you want the user to not even see this hello.docx. It is very easy to do that. You simply go into hello.docx. And once again block the user. If you block the user Viren in here, he will not even know that there is a file called hello.docx in this folder structure. It is limitless, you can go down and go down and apply this permission model. Now since we have done this I will just log in as the user called Viren and show you what he sees when he's trying to log in and try to access this folder. Let's try to do that. I'm going to log in. As you can see I have logged in as the other user Viren. As Vimal, I shared my folders with him. He can click on shared with you and here he will get the list of all files and folders, which other users have shared with him. You can see the file study materials were shared by me, 8 months ago. Clicking on study materials will take him directly to that folder and most importantly he will have the permission which has been assigned to him in this folder, which is, read and download. He can see these files and can download these files also if he wants, so if he click on this file there is this download button available for him to download. He cannot upload anything. You can see that the upload and create new buttons are missing here. But as soon as he going inside the for uploads folder, you will find that nowhere he has additional permissions, he can upload the files and can create new folders, create new files, and so on. This is how things work in Fileago and this is how the permission model applies when you are working with folders in Fileago. Since he has write permission, it is possible to create certain type of file straight within the Fileago portal itself. If he wants he can create a docx file, excel file, powerpoint. All this file can be created and edited straight from the browser itself. 
Now since he has write permission. Let's try to do that. Let's take this nick2.docx for example, and there is nothing much in this file, this is just one line document. Now when it comes to editing you do not have to download your Word Excel, PowerPoint, documents locally and then make changes and upload it again. There is no need for that because, file ago already comes with a built-in editor, using this you can do all these tasks. One good thing regarding this editor is that this is a real-time collaborative editor, which means multiple people can work on the same file at the same time. I'll just show you how that works. Let's just open the file like I go into actions and open in doc, view. And by this, you will get the real-time editor interface. This is exactly like your Word Excel PowerPoint. All these files can be edited online and almost all your functionalities that you do in your office suite can be done here. If your document has like complex macros and steps then if there are chances that it might fail other than that, whatever things you do there it can be done here as well. As I said, this is a real-time collaborative editor, which means multiple users can work on the same file at the same time. Imagine you're approaching a deadline. Your boss said that he wants this document completed by noon today. And what you can do is you can simply create a private share and invite one of your colleagues to come and help you out on this file. Let's see how that works now as Vimal. I also have access on file because basically that file belongs to me. Let me also try to edit the same file using the document editor. As you can see I'm already seeing that there is a cursor. This is my cursor. This is the other cursor belong to the other user. I am able to see that there are two users. One is me, the blue cursor belongs to Viren. Let me just check from his perspective. He can see that there's a green cursor that belongs to another user. Now, this green cursor belongs to me. This is what I call real-time collaborative editor because even if, I merely make a selection as one user that is instantly propagated to the other user. I am showing this demo into separate browser windows, but this works very well, even if these users are sitting continents apart. Both users can see what the change the other user is making on that file, and when anyone is happy they can very easily click on save it will merely create a new revision on the file. When the work is done the first user can remove that private share and from that moment onwards the second user will not be having access to this file and then he can submit the document to his boss. This is how collaborative editing will look like when you're working in Fileago. Obviously, I'm not saving anything. I'm just showing how collaborative editing will look like. Till now what we have been doing is that we have been showing you how the permission model works in my personal workspace, the same applies to group workspaces as well. For example, if I go into the marketing group, you can do exactly the same things, like creating private shares, public shares, and so on. Everything is the same but one change is that groups can be managed by a group admin. In the marketing group, if I click on about this group, you will see that I am a group admin here and there are two additional users called Grafen and Viren. As a group admin, I have the privilege to add more users if I want or make changes to these users like restricting their permissions and so on. In Fileago, you can add people in a group and you can decide what permission they should have on the resources in the group. For example, if I click on edit regarding related to Grafen user, you can see that this user only has read-only permission the user cannot even download any of the files. This user cannot create any public share or private share. Basically the user cannot share anything that is in the marketing group with anybody else because these permissions are not there. The user cannot download any of these files because allow downloading files is not there. The user cannot upload or delete any files because he only has read-only permission. The user can preview the files, the user will not be able to download and the user will not be able to share but the user is still a member of the marketing group. Let's take the other user for example Viren, you can see that he has a better set of permissions. He has read write and deletes as well as downloading of files as well. But even he does not have the permission to share anything that is belonging to the marketing group with somebody else. This is how you can securely define the permission that group members should have on a resource but that is flexible as well. For example, this user currently has read-only permission on every data, every file, and folder that is belonging to the marketing group. But what happens if two months later, there will be a scenario where that user should write on this file? Only on this particular file, if that is the case. You can very easily create a private share here and select that user. And assign the set of permission that you want maybe a read and write and maybe downloading also fully for this particular file. And if I create a private share this permission will apply only for this particular file. In the remaining files, the user will only have read-only permission because that is the default permission applied for the user in this particular group. This is the flexibility that Fileago gives you when working in groups as well. 
I have already taken everything that is related to sharing inside the organization. Now, let's also discuss a bit about how you can share files with people outside the organization. Right now how we do that. We will simply create a new email attach the file as an email attachment and send it to the other person. Now that works but there are problems like what if the data that you want to share is a huge size data, anything more than 25 megabytes, there will be problems in sending the email. Even if you somehow did that. You never know, what the other person is going to do with the data. You do not know whether that person has seen your email, opened the file or seen the file, and what if that user forwards the same file to 10 other people. The good thing is that you can stop doing all these things. You can keep your data in Filego itself and instead you can share by creating a public share. You can share folders as well as files to public users. But here when you do that you get the chance to protect it using a password. It can expire after a certain period of time. Let's see hello.docx, for example. Now if I want to share this file with a public user, I simply have to come down and create a public share. Just click on plus here and here I can type in the email addresses. I'm just entering an email address of a person and here you can assign till which date this user should be able to access the file. Basically we are not attaching this resource as an attachment and sending instead a publicly accessible URL is generated and that is being sent to the user via email. Till how long this URL should be valid. You can keep it for say, 31st of this month. After this date, if a user tries to open this URL, then he will not be able to access it because that is invalid. If you want the user to download the file, you have to give the allow downloading of files only then he will be able to download, else he can only preview the file and more importantly you can even secure the share using a password. I can either type in my desired password or I can auto generate, okay. Looks like a strong password. I will keep it here. You can even change the password after each file download. This comes very handy if you're considering the last situation, which I was talking about. What if, this user is going to forward the link to 10 other people? It means that 10 other people know the URL knows the password as well. They can access this file. But if you enable this option, when the first user clicks on the download button immediately the password will get changed, the remaining 9 people will not be able to access that link anymore. Basically this user will once again have to contact me in order to get the new password and only after me giving him the new password he will be able to access the file again. So let's just see how that works. I just create a public share. What happens is that an email is sent to that user along with the password as well as the public share URL. We just click on the info, you can see that this is the password and this is the public share URL. If I just copy and try to access it. You can see that we have protected it using a password. First, we will have to give a password. This is the current password, I will just copy and paste it here. And since the password is correct, I have access to it. I can see the file and I have the option to download. If I initiated download immediately the password will get changed. Let's just try that. I just initiated a download. I'm not saving it but the download has been initiated now. If you notice a message has come here saying that a public user has downloaded the file. Now that was the real-time notification that just went off. Every time an event happens, you're always kept notified. Now that the user downloaded the file. It means that the user of Amal in file ago will immediately receive an email notification stating that somebody has downloaded the file. You can store you can collaborate on your data share with people inside as well as outside the organization but along with that file ago can also take care of all your communication needs, like real-time communication which includes chat voice video conferencing all these things can be done straight from file ago itself. From an organization's perspective, they do not have to invest in multiple solutions to do the work. Let's see how that can be done in order to do that. I'm just going to log in to another server where I have these options enabled. If you want to initiate a chat, all you have to do is simply click on chat here and you'll be taken into the chat portal where you can communicate in real time with other users in the organization. In the chat we have a concept called channel, which is exactly the groups that we have and you can even do your direct communication with one-on-one -on -one users if you want. If I click on any channel, you can see that I am able to see all the history. I am able to see all users who are there. I'm able to even fetch all the activity which has happened to start from the beginning. I can see all the users and this is when somebody initiated a video call. If I want to do a video conference on this channel, have everybody involved. I merely have to come here and click on video chat. And it will ask me if we want to start a video call if I hit yes, I'm not doing that. 
If I hit yes, then a video conferencing will begin, and in this small window, I will be able to communicate with others and a link will come, click to join which other users can click and they will also be getting this interface where everybody can communicate, and all the same functionality which you do in other softwares and applications. Like Zoom or Microsoft Team for sharing the screen and real-time communication chat. All these things can be done straight from your file ago itself. This can be done one-on-one -on -one as well. If I want to do a one-on-one -on -one communication, I simply have to initiate a video call here in the direct messaging and it will be a direct messaging video call. Everything that you're doing using other solutions can be done using Filego software. But the advantage in Filego is that. Imagine, if you're hosting Filego in your own office or on your own server, it means that no data is going outside. Your files are already inside in Filego. Whatever communication is happening, you are streamlining that also and bringing it into your control. Nothing is going on through Zoom or any other solution. Everything is under your control and you can audit it whenever required. If something happens, you can get a log. I have covered almost everything regarding the user interface, how user access and do his work in Filego. Let me show you the admin panel. Now, this user is an admin. I have access to the admin panel. I'll just quickly show you what you will see there in the admin panel. You have the ability to manage the user's group's devices to all these kinds of activities. But most importantly, even though I'm an admin there is no way that I can see what these users have in their data in their workspace. There is no way I can see what they have stored in their workspace. If I want to do that, I would have to somehow modify the password of this user and then you try to log in as that user that can be done because I am the admin user but even if I do that it will also generate an event log. Even admin activities are logged here. Nobody can escape from the logging mechanism. Even admin activities are locked. If next day that user comes to office and he sees that he's not able to log into his account, he can just raise a complaint to the management, and they can very easily come and click on the event logs and they will come to know that admin has reset your password. Then question could be asked to admin asking why he has done that, so there is no escaping the logging here. Earlier you saw logging related to individual files and folders. This is the global event log. As an administrator, you can see all activities here. You can see when somebody logged in if something happened something failed. You are able to see that as well for which resource from which IP address, and will related even documents are also there. For example, I created a private public share for this resource. These are the event arguments that are related to it. Everything that happens, it is always logged here. When it comes to users and groups, it is very much possible for you to restrict their disk space utilization. You can see that this user can only use up to 1 GB of Coda, whereas this user can use unlimited disk storage. It all depends upon how you want to use it same as the case with the groups as well. I will also talk about LDAP setting. If you already have an active directory or an open LDAP server running in your organization, you do not have to create your users and groups every time, you simply have to integrate it with Filego. So you simply have to provide its hostname, port, user DN and password. And here you can configure like sync interval once in every hour. It means that Filego will start fetching your users and groups straight from your active directory server itself. If you want to configure from which part Filego should fetch the user accounts, it is very easy to do that. You can configure from which base user tree want to start fetching. You can filter using object class, using a custom filter and these are several additional features, which is handy when you want to nitpick and create only specific user accounts in Filego. Same is the case with groups, if I want I can sync all the groups also from Filego and the default permissions that they should have. By default if a new user joins your organization, you simply have to create a user account for him in your active directory and within one hour because the sync interval is once in every hour, within one hour his account will automatically be created in Filego. And the user will be able to start using Filego as well. The main thing is that the authentication request is always passed down to the backend LDAP or active directory server. In the login page when I try to log in, I type in my username and password that is always authenticated with Active Directory, and if the Active Directory declines to authenticate then the user will not be able to access this file Go account. This is the main settings where the most common thing is the email server settings. You have to specify an email server only then you will receive email notifications and all. Here is a setting that comes handy like till how long do you want to preserve the older revisions. You can keep it shorter like for 15 days, or you can keep it longer like once every month, say for 30 days. If you want to keep it longer you can keep it for up to 120 days. 
all previous revisions, which is under 120 days. It will be kept or if you're an organization where you want to preserve all your previous revisions, you can keep it forever as well. The previous revisions will only get deleted when that file itself gets deleted. Now at this stage, I would also talk about data loss prevention that we have. Of course with revisions, we are giving a data loss prevention because even if you accidentally make any change in a file, you can easily recover its previous version. We are not replacing the file. So using the previous revision you can easily recover the data but what happens if somebody deletes a file? For example, if I just go into my workspace and if I just delete this file what will happen? Actually I will never lose data. The file will merely go into the trash folder. Let me see if there is anything, there are a lot of files in this trash folder right now. And the most important part is this is exactly like your recycle bin that you have in Windows, except that there is no option for you to empty it. So I do not have any option here to empty the recycle bin into the trash. So these data will be here till 30 days. On the 31st day, the data will get cleaned up automatically. So this folder will remain for an additional 10 days and on the 11th day from now. This will get automatically cleared. And for this file, it will be here for an additional 20 days. So that is how it works. All this is taken care of automatically by the software. The user does not have to do anything but this gives a user a chance to recover the data. Simply move this data back to somewhere in home and I can start using this file again if I want. In case of file ago there is never a chance of instant data loss. If you make a change, you are only creating a new revision. If you delete a file it will merely come into trash. You can still recover it. You have 30 days for that. I think I have covered almost everything which is related to the web portal. As I said, this is the web portal and this is just one component of file ago. There are other components as well. The second component is I want to talk to you about is the web drive. Some users do not like to work on their files from a browser. Editing and uploading files from the browser are not for everyone. If you are that kind of user there is no need to worry because you can access these data straight in your operating system as itself as a network attached drive. You do not have to log into the web portal every time, you can access it as a network attached drive. In order to do that, you simply have to connect to the server. Now, this process is exactly the same for Windows as well as Mac. I will just connect to the web drive endpoint and I will authenticate as the user. If my authentication is successful, then I will be getting access to my files. If you see these are exactly the same files that you are seeing here. Shadowcopy.pdf This is something that you have already seen. So as you can see I am viewing the same file here. If I want to transfer any file, I can very easily go into my desktop copy and drag and drop a file here and it will immediately be uploaded into Fileago. And the backend process remains that same whether you use the web portal or the web drive. If you're uploading files this way, which means the deduplication will be there, the encryption will be there, notifications will go out, logging will happen, permission models will also apply. For example, if in this folder I only have read-only permission it means that if I double-click and go inside this folder here, I will not be able to put any files there. If I have read and download I will be able to read the data from there. I will be able to see the content there. But without write permission, I will not be able to put any data. The same permission model also applies when you're accessing it this way. This comes handy for an organization if you want you can totally block your access to pen drives. So you can have your administrator say that you have totally blocked the USB ports and instead what they can do is create a web drive and mount a web drive and point on all the machines. As you know pen drive is the most common carrier for these viruses and trojans attacks, so you totally eliminate that from your organization. If user wants to quickly share something he can barely put the data here and the other person can take the data from this system by accessing the same endpoints. This is how you can transfer data and do it in a secure way using web drive. There is one final component that we have. It is called the sync agent. Sync agent is a very small application that we have. It runs inside your windows machines. Sync agents give you the functionality where you can sync your data from your laptops and desktop and sync it with any folder that is residing in your Fileago account. For example, if as a user I am always storing my files into my documents or always putting my files into my desktop. If these two folders are the folders, which I always work on. This is where all my data is kept. There is no need for me to actually back up everything that is stored in my machine. You can download and install Fileago Sync Agent, 
and it's a very small application like 5.8 megabytes in size is the installation file and you can configure these two folders to sync with Fileago server and can define to sync my documents as well as my desktop folder and Fileago will silently run in the background and it will keep on sync. You can configure the sync interval starting from 10 minutes to at least once in a day so that is configurable. You can even configure the direction to sync by default it is bi-directional sync. If any file or any data is missing in Fileago it will be uploaded to the file ago on server and if any data is missing in the local folder, then it will be pulled and put into the local folder. This is the two-way sync, but if you want you can use it as one-way sync as well. Which means, always from local to file ago server, which means it will always keep on pushing new data to the file ago server. Or, always from file ago to local, it will always be pulling new data from file ago server. These kind of functionalities are there. It's highly flexible and most importantly only the changed chunks are being sent through the network. So if you are working on a file, which is 10 megabytes you made a small change the next time the sync agent runs. It is merely transferring the changed chunks, and not the entire 10 megabytes over the network so that the syncing process is also very fast, and using the sync agent, you can also have cases like a replication with multiple devices. For example, let's say that you have two devices one is your home laptop, as well as the other, is an office laptop. If both of these devices have sync agent running and both of the devices are actually syncing to the same target folder in Fileago, it means that these two devices are in sync. From office, let's say by noon you started working on a file, and by the end of the day you have made certain changes, but it is unfinished, so you save the file and that file gets synced into Fileago automatically, and when you reach home and you open your home laptop, that file is already present in your home laptop. Now you can resume your work you can continue to finish the work at night and next day when you reach your office. The updated file is already available for you in the office laptop. This will keep your devices in sync as well. This is the benefit of sync agent. Imagine in a situation if a virus attacks happen your laptop or desktop once you clean up your virus attacks and so on you can very easily recover the data. Using the sync agent. Imagine if a situation happens, your system got infected by virus 3 days ago only today you are getting to know of it but sadly for you yesterday the sync agent had run and all the virus affected data has also been pushed into file ago. Let's imagine that is the situation that happens still there is no need to worry first and foremost file ago application server runs entirely on Linux so whatever virus which is related to Windows and all it does not actually affect Linux architecture. Secondly, as I said, we have versioning. So even if there is a virus affected data in file ago that is in the latest version, your old data is still there. It is just available as a second version of those files. You can clean up your system or your network. Then once everything is done, you can reinstall the sync agent and then you can pull back an older revision from file ago. It will pull back the second revision from the file ago and then you get all your data back and then you can start using it again. This is also another way through which you can use a file ago in case if something happens to your networks like viruses, trojans or ransomware attacks. File ago will also protect you in those cases. With this, we reach the end of this session. Thank you for joining.